All right, so the next thing I wanna highlight in our studio over here on the right-hand side, aside from the brushes, is our layers. We are gonna be working with layers a lot. Um, basically, when we look at our artboard, each artboard almost acts like a folder. So if we look on the left-hand side, or if we look on the right-hand side here, with artboard one selected, you'll see there's a little drop down, and basically everything that is on artboard one is housed within the artboard one folder. So this just keeps everything kind of um, organized and everything that you put on one artboard will stay within that artboard and that will be helpful when we're exporting. Um, what's nice is that we can also select all of these elements and group them. So we can click on that first curve and then drag our Apple Pencil to the right over the next one and the next one all the way down until we have all of them selected here or we can just go over with our move tool and select everything on that artboard. If we go back into our layers here, we'll see everything's all selected. And then if we select this little icon that kind of looks like a puzzle piece, it will group everything together so that we can kind of like move and keep all those elements together. We'll be working with that a lot as we are kind of like finalizing our placement of our layouts. We can also adjust the layer settings, our layer options. So if we select an element within our artboard and we select that three dot menu in our studios here, you'll see these are the layer options. We can adjust whether or not it's visible. We can also adjust the opacity and we can make it lighter or darker, more see-through or more opaque by dragging left or right on our opacity slider. We can also change the layer effects we can adjust. We can go in and select different options like multiply, darken. Um, all of this is really helpful when you're working within digital art to add things like shadows and highlights and stuff like that, but we'll utilize it today to kind of add some more 3D feel to the overall layout so it doesn't feel so flat and 2D. And then if we tap that back arrow, it'll bring us back out to our original layers. We can also add layers by selecting that little plus icon. We can add a vector layer, a pixel layer, a masking layer. And then of course we can throw things away by hitting that trash can if we don't want something on our artboard or if we don't want a specific artboard or layer, we can just select the trash can and select the item and then um, select the trash can and it'll delete it. But if you wanted to keep that, just double tap or just use two fingers to tap to undo. All right, so I'm gonna tap the layers again to kind of bring it in. And then we're also going to check out our FX tools um, by selecting that little FX icon. And I like to utilize the FX tool to add things like Gaussian blurs, shadows, overlays, to give things some dimension. So I'm gonna select this scribble that I created here and I'm going to Go into my layer effects and I'm gonna select outer shadow. I'm gonna tap on it and you'll see the little icon kind of turns blue and moves to the right. That's how you know it's on. Once I've done that, I'm gonna actually tap where the word outer shadow is and at the bottom you'll see these options pop up. So what you're able to do is adjust your opacity, your radius, your offset and the intensity of the shadow. So if I increase the opacity, it's gonna darken it. I'm gonna increase the radius by going to the right. If you wanna decrease, you just have to tap on it and drag your pencil to the left. And you'll see kind of like this bit of shadow starting to form and then we'll select offset. So the direction of it goes off to the lower right. And then you can increase or decrease your intensity. So it gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. So it looks like it's popping off of the page versus um, just being a flat 2D element in the vector space. You can also adjust your angles. And this really depends on like where you're assuming light is coming from. And you can adjust the blend mode if you want it to be multiply, darken, linear burn, lighten. I just like multiply for something like this. Um, I also like to utilize bevel and emboss. So I'm gonna tap off of that scribble line. I'm gonna select this circle here. So I'm gonna go into my layers, make sure I select that circle, then go back into my FX tools, and I'm gonna turn on my bevel and emboss options. 
and already you kind of see it popping up. I like to use this with, because um, sometimes you know how on journals you have like stitching. And so what I like to do is if I add any type of stitching element, I like to utilize the bevel emboss. So I'm gonna select bevel and emboss. I'm gonna make sure I click on the word and I'll get the actual options at the bottom. And you can change the type. So let's zoom in a bit. So this is pillow. This is an inner emboss, outer emboss, a plain emboss. So I'm gonna do kind of like this pillow so it feels like it's almost stamped. And then you can adjust your radius again by dragging your Apple Pencil left or right, or you can just tap on it and actually write a radius in. And then you can adjust the depth if you want it inverted or if you want it to be more of a soft curve. And then you can tap that arrow to go back out and then you can adjust your softness or hardness. I like to soften it a bit so it's not so harsh on the eye. And you can adjust your, your azimuth so that it kind of has a little bit more of highlights and then the elevation as well to make it look deeper or taller. And then again, this just adds kind of like that nice 3D effect to your overall view. All right, so those are a few techniques to utilize um, when you're working with the layer effects options in this layer effects studio. Now we're down to the last two studios I wanna highlight first. Let's select our character studio. Um, this will allow you to revise and edit your text. So I'm just gonna double click the hello that I've created. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit and on this side, you'll get options to change the style of your text. You can select bold options, you can add an underline, you can do strike throughs. You can adjust uh, the paragraph settings, whether it's left aligned, centered, or right aligned. You could also adjust your positioning and your tracking. Um, you can go in and revise your typefaces as well. You can revise your letting within your spacing. And then you can also select the different traits of the, the font that you're using. So if you want it to be italic versus regular versus bold italic, things like that. Um, so you'll be able to edit and revise your text here, but you're also able to do that when you are work, like when you double click and highlight the text, you'll get your font options at the very bottom as well. It's just you get a lot more detail like kerning and letting and adjusting your baseline and positioning within this studio here, but you any of the basic stuff will pop up at the bottom. And then finally, what I wanna highlight is the Transform Studio. Um, we'll be using this a lot because we'll be utilizing the order functions as well as the alignment functions. Um, you can resize your dimensions here as well. You'll see if I increase the size of this, my dimensions will update here in terms of the width and the height of that specific word or um, shape that I'm working with. And then we can also duplicate this. I'm gonna go up to that edit menu. I'm gonna select duplicate, and then I'm going to move the duplicated version out of the way. And then what I wanna do is perhaps have both of these aligned to the left-hand side. So what I'll do is take my Apple Pencil, drag across both of the hellos so that they're selected. And if you have trouble with that, you can just go into your layer studio and then just select each one there. And then you'll go back to your transform studio and we'll go down to our alignment options here. And we're gonna select align horizontally to the left and it will line everything up to the left for me here. And I like to use this a lot with like shapes and words to make sure everything is aligned and everything is spaced nice and evenly. We can even um, space them vertically. So this stuff is really helpful um, when we're working within layouts, making sure everything is lined up nicely. Um, and again, one of the reasons why I really enjoy working in Affinity, just because you kind of get into the nitty gritty details. Um, and for those of you who really like the small details, like being able to line things up really easily and simply, this is a great app for that. And now finally, I wanna show you um, just a couple more tips when it comes to working with your line segments. So I'm gonna select my pen tool and I'm gonna change my mode from pen to line and I'm gonna create 
some lines. And what's nice is I have my magnetics turned on so it will snap into place to create a straight line for me. And then what we can do is revise these lines as well. So I'm gonna bring this over here. I'm just gonna rotate it. And then I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And if you notice that the studios and your tools went away, don't fret. Um, if you select that little icon in the upper right hand corner, it'll bring everything back. What we're gonna do is select this line. I'm gonna click on it with my move tool. I'm gonna go into my stroke studio. Basically, it looks kind of like a paint stroke. It's right underneath your color studio. Um, and you can edit and adjust the size of your line here, so the width of your line. And you could also select the type of line. So say you want a dash line, this is where you can do that. You can select the dash option and then you can revise the size of the dash and your gaps. And then if you click on advanced, you can even adjust the cap, your join options and your align. So if you want things to be like a butt cap so that it's more square, um, you can do that or you can keep like the curved options and this just gives you a different style of line. Um, depending on what your needs are, you could also select scale with objects. So when you make something bigger, the line is going to get thicker. Um, I like to keep it turned off though so that it has the same size and style um, even if I'm making it longer. It really just depends on your needs. And now the last thing that I want to highlight is how to place an image within your layout. So I'm going to move some of this around just so that we have some space. And you can go into your document menu here and then we're going to go down to place image and you can select from the cloud. You can select from your photos and I'm just going to select a pattern I worked on. And then once you place it, it'll load it. And then what you do is you take your Apple Pencil and you drag wherever you want that image placed. And it will place it for you. And then you can resize it as needed, move it around. Um, what's also neat, you can create masking effects with this. So say I wanted this pattern to be in this shape. So what I can do is go to my right hand side, select my layers, go to where that layer is. I'm going to drag it so that it is within the group that I've created by just dragging it on top of that layer group and now it'll be in it and then what we want to do is take that and drag it so that it is on top of that shape that we want it to be masked into and then we're going to take the photo and we're going to literally drop it right onto that shape and we're literally going to drop it right onto that shape you'll see a blue line that goes across the layer and then it will go into that shape so i'm going to go into that curve i'm going to remove my stroke and then if we click on this you'll see that that pattern is now within that shape um, so it's a nice fun way to kind of play around with clipping masks and adding special touches here and there all right, so now that we're done with getting used to and playing around with some of the tools and studios in Affinity Designer, I'm gonna clear this page by just selecting everything. And then 